Greetings, salutations, respect and love. Welcome to the new and improved Prog Corner, where uh, today we say hello to the new lighting rig, uh, courtesy uh, my wife, birthday gift. Thank you so much. It looks great. And uh, we say goodbye to that annoying watermark, which has infested this channel's videos pretty much since day one, making us look all rinky dink and Mickey Mouse. But we're not having any of it anymore. Uh, I actually, uh, you know, plunked down some money and, uh, you know, you don't have to deal with that anymore. But today we are dealing with the greatest prog rock album covers of all time. I asked you guys for your suggestions and you nominated over a hundred. I disqualified a couple of them. Somebody uh, nominated a Black Sabbath album, Born Again. Somebody nominated a the Who Sell Out, not Prague, so I didn't include that, but uh, there's a couple things in there that maybe aren't 100% Prague that I have included, but whatever. Uh, so we're going to do this in four episodes. Today we're going uh, from number 76 to number 100, and we're starting with number 100, and there are actually a couple albums uh, on this list that I have never heard of before, and this is one of them. Take a gander at this album cover. It's CoQ Junrica by J.A. Caesar. Wow, that thing is awesome. This thing came out in 1973. Clearly, it's Japanese. Burt Carlson nominated this. I've never even heard of this artist. I've never seen this album, but I am intrigued, and I promise I am going to listen to it this week. It looks really cool to me at number 99. It's Henry Cow and Praise of Learning. This one came to us courtesy of V. Sear. And uh, yeah, we all know and love that Henry Cow sock logo. It's really weird, but it does kind of really impart the irreverent feeling and, and vibe of this band quite a bit. This was their fourth album. Their first, I think all of them got a sock on the first three to, you know, this came out in 75 and I really like Henry Cow a lot. At number 98, it's Caravan with four girls who go plump in the night. This one uh, was nominated by Toru Okada. Thank you, an excellent one. And I really didn't expect this Caravan album to be one of the top album covers, but I do like it. This is their fifth album, came out in 1973. And this is the album where... Uh, Richard Sinclair's out, David Sinclair's in, it's a good record, but we're not talking about the music, we're talking about the sleeves, so we go to number 97, and a modern one from Italy, it's Logos, and Sadako e le mil gru de carta, translates into Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes, apparently this album is about a girl who uh, suffered from uh, radiation poisoning after the Hiroshima blast, and she was told if she made a thousand in paper crane she would be cured and the album cover really does reflect you know that symmetry and the geometry of origami it's such an amazing record and i love that album cover tony amo thank you for that suggestion i love the album i love the artwork at number 96 we're staying in italy but it's back to the 70s with Aria and Arbeat Mach Free, their debut album from 1973. What a great album. Thank you, Paul Denby, for that suggestion. The album cover really does get you in the mood of what's going on with this record. I'm going to be doing my Italian. I, I've been promising to do my Italian Prague episode, and uh, I will be doing it soon, and I guarantee you Aria will be uh, definitely a part of it at number 95. We're talking about Brian Eno and another Green World, a great album, a great album cover. This was his third solo album after leaving Roxy Music. Came out in 1975, and it's a little different from his first two, which were a little bit more art pop. This one is very experimental. It's amazing. You got Fripp, you got... Phil Collins, you got a bunch of people on the album, but the artwork is great, and it really does uh, comment on the music inside. This came from Drew Blues. Thank you for the nomination. I love Eno. Good call. At number 94, another album I've never even heard of before, another band I'm not familiar with. The band is called Flight. And the album is Dawn Dancer. This came out in 1979. Apparently, these guys are from the Netherlands. Thank you, Very Best Art Rock, for this suggestion. I need to check this out. I most certainly will. Um, 
Apparently they sound somewhere in the middle of like Camel and Focus, but uh, I'm going to check it out and see what I think. At number 93, it's the Raven that refused to sing and other stories from Stephen Wilson. Yeah, we all know this record. Uh, thank you, Jacob Roberge, for the nomination. This thing came out in 2013. Uh it's obviously Stephen Wilson's third solo album. And to a lot of people, it's the greatest modern prog album ever. It's fantastic. And the album cover is really, really good. At number 92, it's Marillion and Marbles. Yeah, this is my favorite Marillion album. I'll put it out there right away. But I do like the album cover a lot. It definitely gets you in the spirit of what the story is about. Thank you, Gert Vanderwerf. For this nomination, Marvels came out in 2004. It was Marillion's 13th studio album, and uh, the artwork definitely helped uh, really pin down how great that record is. At number 91, David Sanchez and the Forest of Feelings. This is an album I haven't heard in a long, long time. This came out in 1975. If you don't know this cat, uh, apparently he's from Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. After he left, uh, he went into more experimental jazz fusion-y kind of territory or whatever. This is a good record. I need to go back and listen to it again. Thank you, Arnold B., for the suggestion. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be listening to that later on today. And number 90, it's Anthony Phillips and Private Parts and Pieces, the second part. Uh, he had one, I guess his third album was part one. This is overall his fifth album. Came out right after Sides. But I guess a lot of this material was stuff that he was working on when he was working on his second album, Wise After the Event. Um, what a fantastic record. Thank you, John Selig, for this. This album came out in 1980. And if you don't know Anthony Phillips and his amazing solo career, this is a pretty decent place to start, actually. At number 89, we're going to proto Prague Territory, and it's Quatermass, 1970s debut album, their only album, released on the Great Harvest label. Uh, these guys had connections to Deep Purple, but uh, musically, they were more like the nice. Um, check out the Hypnosis cover. I think this might be the first Hypnosis cover that we're talking about here in this series, but I guarantee it won't be the last. At number 88, it's Dream Theater's Octavarium. And this is our first entry for the great Hugh Syme, uh, the great artist who does a lot of dream theater and uh, a lot of uh, another band <laughs> that we're probably going to be talking about here a little bit. This nomination came from Guitars, Cats, and Music. I love Octavarium. I really like the album cover, the big, you know, clicky ball thing. It's awesome. You know, it came out in 05. This was uh, DT's eighth album. And uh, yeah, it's a great album cover. I really, really like Hugh Syme a lot. At number 87, speaking about Hugh Syme, how about Rush Permanent Waves? Thank you, nickname, for this suggestion. Great album cover. Really gets you in the spirit of what the music's all about. The whole pioneering spirit and the whole idea that they are progressing their music forward. It all certainly comes through with that great album cover. Uh, Hugh Syme had been doing album covers for Rush ever since uh, 1975's Caress of Steel. And he did them all, I think, all the way to Clockwork Angels, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's incredible. That's a great album cover. Good suggestion. At number 86, it's Budgie and Bandolier. This came out in 1975. It was Budgie's fifth album. Um, our Budgie prog, yeah, kind of, sort of, you know, there's a Roger Dean connection with Budgie. But this one was Patrick Woodruff, um, who you might know from a lot of other album covers that he did. Greenslade's Time and Tide. It looked like Roger Dean, but it was Patrick Woodruff. Sad Wings of Destiny uh, from Judas Priest was Patrick Woodruff. The Straub's Burning for You. He's a great artist, and Bandolier is an amazing cover. I love it. At number 85, it is our first entry for the great Roger Dean, and it's Asia's second album, Alpha, released in 1983. 
I, I like this album cover. I, I do like some of the other Asia album covers maybe a little bit better. This one felt a little watercolory and washed out for me. I love that first Asia album cover. And I like some of the ones that came out you know, later on maybe a little bit better. But uh, Roger Dean's work for Asia, just incredible. Thank you, Beavis PDX, for that. A very good call. And the Bandolier from Budgie. That was uh, Rafa. Uh, yeah, he nominated that. So I'm sorry I didn't mention you. Number 84. This one I didn't expect. It's Renaissance Prologue. Their third album, which came out in 1972. But really, this is the first album with Annie Haslam and John Camp. And all the people that made up the great classic renaissance lineup and this was the first of that mark ii version of the band and uh, this one came to us from xtc xtc dude i like your handle anybody that calls himself that is gonna be okay in my book and number 83 we're talking about songs from the wood by jethro tull this was a nomination from pat smith and if ever there was an album where the album cover really gave you a super duper accurate clue about the music you might find therein. It's definitely this album because the music sounds exactly like the album cover tells you it would. It's an amazing album. It was Tull's 10th album. Uh, came out in 77. Yeah, you all know the music. I love it. And I really like the artwork. We're probably going to have a couple more Jethro Tull album covers to talk about as time goes on in this series at number 82. We're going to Sweden and it's a modern one. All Traps on Earth. A Drop of Light. This came out in 2018 from the uh, from the ashes of Anglegard, past and present. You've even got uh, uh, Yoen Braun's uh, daughter singing on this thing. Let's hope we get a second uh, album from uh, All Traps on Earth because this album is really great and the artwork is amazing. It comes courtesy of a dude named Santiago Caruso. I am not familiar with that artist, so if he's done any other album covers, let me know because I'm not familiar with with it or him at number 81 we're going to talk about an artist i am familiar with it's Derek riggs and his album cover somewhere in time for iron maiden yeah i talked about you know maybe having one or two in here that aren't pure prog is iron maiden prog yes no i don't care they're progressive and they're amazing this was nominated by the great jim newstead and rob watson although all my other multiple nominee ones will probably end up in episode four. Uh, this is a multiple nominee entry that does not get that high because Iron Maiden is not capital P prog and some people will probably decry their inclusion here but the album cover is so cool and if you get the microscope out the magnifying glass you'll see all these little references to all these other things in Iron Maiden's career it's really cool and you can spend hours and hours uh, dissecting everything on there I just love it Derek Riggs what a great artist you know the guy that invented Eddie. <laughs> you know, what else needs to be said about him? At number 80, it's going for the one. And this was nominated by Z Does Gaming. And no, it's not that album cover he's nominating, which is what Roger Dean uh, actually brought to the boys. And yes, John Anderson said no, wanted to go a different route. So they went with this hypnosis cover with the naked guy's butt. Not a big fan of it. The original cover did end up on an art book. Um, called The Flight of Icarus, which Roger and his brother Martin released. Uh, those Roger Dean art books are so cool. I wish I still had them. I lost them many, many moons ago, and they're going for a mint. Um, yeah, going for the one. I prefer the Roger Dean cover, but, you know, you know how it goes. At number 79, it's Camel Mirage, and this was nominated by Van Ferb. Camel's second album, which came out in 1974, was met with a little bit of resistance from a certain tobacco company. So here in the U.S., we had to go with a different album cover. But the original Camel Mirage album cover is just amazing. I used to look at that thing at the record store all the time and wonder, hmm, what are these guys like? And it was one of those album cover images that sucked you in. Yeah, after you know a couple months of staring at that thing, I ended up having to buy it. And I'm so glad I did. So glad to have Camel in my life. At number 78, another band I'm excited about. So happy to have them in my life. It's Super Tramp and Crisis What Crisis. Thank you, Emily Athey, for this nomination. This is Super Tramp's fourth album, coming hot on the heels of uh, Crime of the Century. In fact, it's the same artist, Paul Wakefield. 
did this image, as did Crime of the Century. Just amazing. I really do like the artwork on Crime of the Century. The album itself, I'm not as crazy about it. I like uh, Crime of the Century and even In the Quietest Moments better. So it's kind of like one of those albums caught in the middle. But whatever. Super Tramp's amazing. So, you know, whatever. 77 goes to Kansas and Monolith. I love this album cover. You know, you got the Native American. He's got the space suit on. He's got the helmet on. He's on some alien world or something like that. It is such a cool image. And it fits their music so great. This was the uh, artist Bruce Wolf. I don't know a whole lot about him, but uh, researching his name, turns out that he's the guy that came up with the uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom promo poster. So, you know, we've seen his artwork before. Uh, this was nominated by Albert Hoffman. Thank you so much, Kansas, their sixth album monolith. I love it. I think it's every bit as good as the first five. Some people kind of think monolith is where they dropped off a bit. I disagree, but... Whatever. We're not talking about the music. We're talking about the artwork and number 76. It's uh, Ramses or uh, I don't know. I think it's Ramses is how you pronounce it. Space Hymns. Yeah, it's another Roger Dean cover. This one came out in 71. So this is one of Roger's first. I love this album cover. The music inside is cool too, but uh, I really dig this. This was their first album and uh, this was nominated by Peter Brickley, you know, a very, very astute choice, sir. Uh, very cool. I love it a lot. Yeah, you see I'm rocking my 1962 shirt. Another gift from the wife. Anyway, this was part one. We're going to do part two tomorrow, which will be uh, 51 to 75. Anyway, this is going to be a lot of fun. Stay with me, people, and we're going to have a good time doing this anyway. Have a great day, and I will see you people tomorrow. Peace in the Middle East. God save the king.